Thanks, Ian. It's a switch on the Monty Python line. He's not a very naughty boy. He's the Messiah. Donito Mussolini was personally saved by God, who has so far ignored the deaths of billions of people to step in and save harebrained haystacks. Because that makes perfect sense. The Almighty has already cast his postal vote, and it's for the Peach Powder Puff ex-president. In other news, there was an almighty internet technology blowout. But not the one you think. Another one. Much more serious to those affected than not being able to get money out of the cash machine. That and more coming up with me, Nick Abbott, after the new news at 10 on LBC. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello. We don't know what's happening. <laughs> Southern Europe continues to roast in ferocious heat with uh, scorching and dry conditions, fanning wildfires in Greece and around the Balkans, and seeing red alerts issued across Italy. Greece is experiencing its 11th consecutive day of a heat wave with temperatures forecast to reach 43 degrees, and fires rage in the Peloponnese. France is set to see temperatures uh, rise above 40, de 40 degrees centigrade in the south. And tourist hotspots are throughout the mayor to set to bake with excessive heat alerts in place in Croatia and Spain, where temperatures hit 44 centigrade today. Heat wave warnings are in place in large swathes of Spain. There's that word, swathes, again. No good news ever comes in a sentence that contains the word swathes. In Croatia, the highest ever temperature in the Adriatic Sea was recorded this week. The highest ever. It's the second week the temperatures have been hovering around 40 degrees centigrade in the region. Neighbouring Bosnia and Serbia also hit by the heat. The Bosnian town of Mostar registered a high of 40 degrees centigrade for six consecutive days. Serbia's state power company reported record consumption on Tuesday due to the need for air conditioning in homes. In Albania, wherever that is, the heat led the government to reschedule working hours for civil servants, making it easier for some to work from home. Working from home! <laughs> A severe drought in Sicily has caused the island's only national, natural, not national, natural lake to dry up, with the Italian government declaring a state of emergency. Other than that, how's things going? Oh, fabulous. Meanwhile, in this country, sizzling conditions were experienced today with a mini heat wave due to send temperatures to 30 degrees centigrade in some parts of the country tomorrow. A yellow weather warning. Warning, warning. Lasting 54 hours is in place after a wet start to July, which saw parts of the country well exceed July's average rainfall figures by halfway through the month. London had 154% of its July average rainfall already, and Dorset 120%. Edinburgh's only had 40%, Dundee 33%. Listeners in Glasgow will have been getting their own weather. Correct. <laughs> I mean, I can check on that while you wait. But really, what's the point? Aha! Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, it's it's not raining at the moment in Glasgow. But it will be raining tomorrow and raining on Sunday and raining on Monday and... Oh, what? Not raining on Tuesday or Wednesday. Pfft, rubbish. It'll be raining on Thursday and raining on Friday and raining next Saturday and... Uh, wow, look at that! <gasps> that we, you may have a whole week of no rain coming up, Glasgow. Can you believe that? No. <laughs> no, me neither. Well, we'll find out when we get there, eh? <sighs> and as for the rest of us, would you like to hear the long-range forecast for the next four weeks? No. Right, from now until the end of July. Blimey, it's, it's, it's practically the end of July already. It's nearly Jesus' birthday. <coughs> At first, settled. Then rain, with the potential for warmer conditions in the south, with thunder, lightning, very, very frightening. <coughs> After that, changeable. Showers and rain in all regions, but particularly the northwest. Drier, brighter in the southeast. Temperatures mostly close to average. Mostly. And then the first half of August. Yeah, we're there already. First half of August. Settled, with, settled and dry with warmer-than-average conditions and a chance of short-lived hot spells. 
Settled and dry with warmer than average conditions with a chance of short-lived hot spells? We'll take it. Well, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. I mean, good grief. So we do with the IT first, and we'll get into um, crazy clown town later. Whitehall officials have held a Cobra crisis meeting to discuss the global I... 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 Uh, 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 uh. What? Whitehall officials have held a Cobra crisis meeting to discuss the global IT outage hammering public services this morning. Still continuing to do it. A Cobra crisis meeting. And out of habit, when Boris Johnson heard the words Cobra meeting, he said he couldn't go because he was sorting out his love life or writing a book that will never appear or combing his hair or whatever excuse he gave to miss those valuable emergency meetings at the car at the start of the covid pandemic that he so comprehensively screwed up you couldn't come could you bodge i i can't comment on that i i i, 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 I no he was in america competing with the clacton gas bag as to which of them could come over most desperate to kiss donald trump's ring i'm a nutcase <sighs> But now we are being run not by troops of robots who spout numbers and nonsense that they learned by rote. Yes, Chris Philp, I am talking about you. Now we are being run by real people. Isn't it incredible? Can you believe it? No. Number 10 said Skier and his cabinet was being kept abreast of events as the most serious IT outage that the world has ever seen sparked chaos. Hey, how do you feel about the cashless society now? Um... Hmm? And that's the way the world will fall. Because some computer nerd will sneeze while writing code and planes will fall from the sky and cash machines will seize up and nuclear power stations will fail and every traffic light in the country will turn green at the same time. And we'll be sent back to live like an undiscovered Amazonian tribe. And the only people on Earth who won't notice will be undiscovered Amazonian tribes. <laughs> this time, planes and trains were grounded, the NHS was disrupted, shops closed, football teams unable to sell tickets, and banks and TV channels knocked offline. Businesses and institutions around the globe knocked offline because some software that is supposed to protect systems killed those systems. And you will be able to ponder the irony of that if it happens in the future, while you eat your dog and drink what water is left in your toilet. Disgusting. That's our future, right there. And on that subject, here's a call in uh, Canary Wharf. Hello, James. Hello, Nick. Yes, James. How are you? Good, thanks. So, yes, I wanted to talk about this cyber attack because it's something perhaps it's dear to my heart. So I am one of those computer nerds you talk about. Oh. Uh, I know, I know it's appalling, really. They, they, they shouldn't have let me on. And um, I think what's really shocking about this is that they sort of failed at the first hurdle. So they. I think people often, that they don't think, I think a lot of people don't really understand, like, how problems about this come about. Like, if an architect builds a building and it falls down, or an engineer designs a bridge and it collapses, it's usually something that, you know, you can kind of comprehend what's happened there. They didn't build it strong enough or they used the wrong type of steel. And when it comes to computer systems, we just sort of accept that they fail. You know, a few months ago, whenever it was, we had that complete crisis where air traffic control and everything was grounded. Um, problems like this happen. People don't kind of grasp the crux of it. And the problem here is they completely failed at the first hurdle. They? They're writing software. Who, so is, by who they, is they? They, I'm talking about CrowdStrike. So this is the company who builds this so-called endpoint protection. Right. It's a sort of fancy antivirus. It's yeah. a bit ironic. It's kind of antivirus comes spyware. It's what your employer will put on your computer so they can make sure you're not getting viruses, but they, they can also see you're not doing anything naughty while you're on your work laptop. And... Wait, back up. What? Yeah, yeah, so this is what they call endpoint protection. So this sits on your computer, and if you've got, like, a work laptop that you take home with you or yeah. you use in the office, they're not only making sure it doesn't get infected, because, of course, that's very bad. That's your corporate IT network. Mm -hmm. You've got sealing all your company secrets or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the other point is, you know, they can check exactly what you're doing, so it might take screenshots every minute or uh -oh. so to make sure you're not exfiltrating. Uh-oh. So 
Absolutely. So, so, so this is the type of software that, that's running here. And like I said, they failed at the first hurdle because this software kind of it deeply integrates into, in this case, Windows, so that it can do these kind of things. Because, as you probably know, nowadays, all these computer systems are about privacy. So, you know, Microsoft and Apple, they're trying to build a system where you can't have a random piece of software tracking everything you're doing. So the way you make this work, and like people who play video games might know a bit about this, is you build a sort of driver that plugs into the operating system and it can see absolutely everything you're doing. It's kind of the base of everything. And this is really hard sort of software to write. It can go wrong very, very easily. So you think in this case, you know, it would have all this testing all over it. You know, they'd be looking at their code, they'd be testing it on all sorts of platforms, making sure this can't go wrong. And I mean, of course, I can't speak for CrowdStrike. I don't know what's happening inside their company, but... Well, I think they're probably, they're, they're, they're probably busy freaking out and trying to sell stock. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure they are. I'm sure they are. I mean, their, their share price is plummeting, but clearly some engineer has made some change. It doesn't appear they've done any testing. If they have done any testing, their testing is clearly woeful. And they have pushed this out automatically to computers all over the world. And, I mean, we've seen what's happened. And I, I honestly think people are going to die because of this. You know? Well, perhaps, yeah. yes. But I think that the, the, the you're, you're starting from a point that I would go one step back from. I don't think that it is... Uh, I mean, it may well be uh, the fault of this uh, company, but the companies that rely on that company should also have some sort of backup system that they don't that means they don't rely on just one company essentially down to one individual who's writing code there, there should be backups if if the systems are that important that there's going to keep a plane in the sky then don't just give your entire uh, computer system over to some bloke that you've got no idea who it is or woman sexist well, I, th I think you're quite right, and this is what's often referred to as supply chain security, and there, there have been various legislative measures in the EU who, that uh, have attempted to um, attempted to address this point. And it, it's a very important point that, you know, if you're building software systems and you don't know every piece that goes into your system, you can absolutely fall foul of this. But at the end of the day, when we build complex systems, there will be single points of failure. If you look at a helicopter, a helicopter has sometimes what's called as the Jesus bolt that holds the propeller onto the top of it. Because if that bolt <laughs> breaks, there's not very much you can do. When you build an aeroplane, there's not a backup pair of wings. You know, the wings fall off, that's it. If you build a bridge, there'll be certain struts where if a boat runs into it, the bridge will fall over. And we build systems with these single points of failure and we have to try yeah, but, very hard well, yeah, but forgive me, you're talking about two completely different things. Like a, a bridge should have some sort of um, backup um, technology or engineering that if a bolt fails, the bridge doesn't just collapse into the river. Ditto uh, absolutely, the, uh, the absolutely. computer systems that we're talking about. I mean, there might only be one bolt that uh, secures the propeller to a helicopter, but it might not be physically possible to put another bolt alongside it because... That it might not go round and round as uh, precisely, but um, it, for a computer, you should be able to have some sort of backup to your system. Perhaps, but I, I think the difficulty here is, like I say, they're building software that's very hard. It's very integral to the core of the operating system, so that they're, they're inserting code that sort of runs inside the kernel of the operating system, so that they can build a product that does what they do. And because of a sort of failures in their engineering process, we're seeing what's happening now. And I mean, as your own newscaster said, we have GPs and pharmacies saying we can't give out prescriptions. People are going to die because of this. Well, they People should be able to give out prescriptions. They should, they should have a pad and a pen. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that everything was written down. And, uh, and if, you, if you dropped your information on the floor, it didn't break and you had to go and get a new phone or an iPad or something. You just picked it up because it, it was a notepad. Well, absolutely, but falling back on those paper-based systems that are often still in place, you know, it takes a long time, and this is something that's probably going to take weeks to recover from, I, I, I would have to guess. So, well, you're, uh, you're a computer expert. Um, how's the cashless society sit with you? Badly. Pardon me? The cashless society, how does that concept sit with you? The, I didn't catch your first word before society, sorry. Cashless. Cashless. Well, I mean, it's, it's very dangerous. I mean, we, we've <laughs> yeah, all, it, no it, joke. It, it's very dangerous indeed. <laughs> I think people don't quite 
appreciate this. I, I, yeah. I'm not someone who's totally opposed to this idea out of a notion of, oh, they're going to track everything I'm doing. Of course, there is a risk of that. But as soon as we have a point of failure like this, where we're totally reliant on um, digital payment processes, yeah. like Creed, MasterCard, keeping their systems up, just so that you're able to basically live, that, that's not a great place to be. And we will become reliant on fewer and fewer businesses as well. As those absolutely, businesses get uh, get larger, they will swallow up smaller businesses that might have given uh, some sort of competition to the, to the market. And like food, we will be relying on maybe a small handful of massive corporations that produce everything that we consume. This is our future. And one of those corporations goes down and there goes the human race. Yes. And I think... What I really want to get at here is people have known this is a problem for a long time. So I come from a kind of an academic background in engineering and software engineering. And there's a a huge amount of research that's gone into the problem of how do we build safe and reliable software systems? Because like I say, if you're building a bridge or you're building a building and it just falls over, that's really bad. People die. And uh, as you put it earlier, you know, some nerd sneezes over his keyboard and planes start falling out of the sky. So that's a huge issue. And how do we combat that? And a huge amount of research has been done into this. It's something known as a formal method. How do we, you know, if you're building a bridge, you formally analyze yeah. how do all the forces add up together mm-hmm. and make sure the bridge doesn't fall over. But I, I bet that's, yeah, I understand. We're, we're going over uh, territory that we've covered already. Um, I bet that there's a lot of people who are still hung up on the thing that you said at the beginning which was that you take your work laptop home and they're taking pictures of you, <laughs> of what you're doing at home. Not pictures, not pictures necessarily of you. <laughs> Videos. Oh, my God, it just got worse. Screenshot. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't quite say that. But um, <laughs> the, I think the big difficulty here, again, is that people are not taking on board the proper practice that we need to be doing to prevent these kinds of issues. And people yeah. should be raising questions of criminal negligence, really, I think. Yeah. Put a plaster is- over your webcam and, um, s- and try to uh, uh, seal up your, uh, the microphone on your laptop that, in exactly the same way that Mark Zuckerberg did, in that famous photograph of his. He's got a plaster over his webcam and the one also over the, um, the microphone on his laptop. He, if, he, if, he's, if he's doing it then we should be doing it too. Hey, James, uh, pleasure. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 973 LBC. This is LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Hot. Uh, hey, Chorty. A-I-R. <laughs> We haven't even got to the uh, the really, really important IT breakdown that has affected uh, a lot of people in uh, America. Oh, the humanity. They've been suffering greatly. Huge, huge. But I'll get to that in a minute. 0345 6060 973. Lou says the outage is due to a single point of failure. Spread it out. What does that mean? The first thing you do in IT and internet systems is to make sure that you do not ever have a single point of failure. More so because these systems need to have a restore strategy, which is very fast. I'm in the business, and I know it's ju- it just boils down to total incompetence, says Lou. Lou is an expert on total incompetence. Murtha Tidville. Hello, Jeff. Oh. Oh, Nick. Now, right. Okay. Nick, how many times have I got to told you don't worry about land temperatures? exceeding 40 in different parts of Europe. Mm -hmm. Immaterial. Sea temperatures. Uh Sea temperatures. And what happened this year? The first major hurricane to hit Jamaica and the Caribbean in June. Virtually unheard of. Directly a result of sea temperatures. And the sea temperature is going to affect us. It's probably uh, probably the reason that it's been uh, raining pretty much uh, every day since uh, time began. I mean, I can't recall a time that it was dry other than the last couple of days. And it's, uh, uh, you know... uh, Sea temperatures. Anyway... Scientists will explain and fill in the gaps. But nobody's (laughs) listening because, uh, you know, nobody wants to change their way of life in in order to uh, protect themselves in the future. Well, they are because they put in people away for five years for blocking the motorway. Oh, well, never mind that. that let's, look, yeah, let, let's let, look. I'm your Welsh correspondent. Th- what's happened? We've lost the first minister, Vaughan Gethin. He's gone, right? He's gone because he took 
uh, donation, perfectly legal, but well within the rules, but it was morally wrong, okay? And the Labour Party in Wales were wrapped in arms about it, okay? So he finally gives in and goes. From the word go for the last four months, periodically he has made these statements that he has been the victim of racism because, as you know, he's the first black uh, uh, first minister of any country in Europe. So this accusation of racism is very, very offensive to a lot of people because we haven't been. It's because of these moral questions of taking 200,000 off a convicted criminal. And this, this business that's gone on and he's finally gone is, is left a very, very bad taste in everybody's mouth down here because Starmer should have t- taken the bull by the horns and sacked him anyway. You know, that's the long and the short of it. <sighs> but that's what's been happening down this neck of the woods. All right, but me- meanwhile, over in England, the Conservative Party is taking tens of millions of pounds and millions and millions and millions <laughs> of pounds from uh, various uh, shady individuals, and they just... They just blithely wave it away. Nobody gets, nobody's resigning. Yeah, nobody but... gets to get chucked out of office. None, none of the above. <laughs> but then again, the conservatives, that's the way they do things. So, you know, <laughs> that's, this is something we've got to live with. Yeah. And how, how did the uh, IT uh, blowout affect you then, Jeff? Oh, we, we, we only just get in hot water down here, so <laughs> I, I'm not sure whether yeah. or not... Yeah. <laughs> well, I want you to keep me posted. <laughs> And as soon as it comes online, let me know, all right. Okay. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. Anybody want to talk more about Welsh politics? No. (laughs) I didn't think so, no. No. Even in Wales, they don't want to talk about Welsh politics. Helen says, did you see the pictures of the Trump dinglings with bandages on their ears? (sighs) Jennifer says, did you see Trump return from hospital with a plasticised dressing on his ear? Now he's sporting a massive one, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> He'll be covering his entire torso next. <laughs> John says, "Did you see the dinglings have been wearing badges over their bandages, rather bandages over their ears in solidarity with Trump? Their levels of commitment strike me as a bit superficial, though. They didn't go as far as to adopt to tangerine facial makeup and tumbleweed hairdo- hairdos. Total disgrace," says John. <laughs> yeah, I'll get to all this. And Chris says, this global IT outage today was all Meghan Markle's fault. Is there nothing she won't do for attention? Yeah, thanks a lot, Meghan Markle. No! You see what you've done? <laughs> they keep going on and on and on and on and on about her and Hazza. You know, um, uh, Hazza and Sparkles. Oh, God. There's a picture of Meghan Markle smiling while there's an IT blowout. <laughs> it's, just, there's, it's some sort of mental illness, I think, that the uh, the British press have about Meghan Markle and Hazza. That evil, wicked witch from the West took our uh, little teddy bear. Oh, poor Hazza! Can't think for himself. So the journalists of the uh, the rabid tabloids have to do his thinking for him try to point out that the woman that he's uh, chosen to be his wife is a total disgrace. (laughs) Well, the whole world's gone insane. I mean, it really actually has. Adam says, not sure that the uh, RNC, the Republican National Committee, carried the momentum of the defiant hero Trump has been portrayed as this week. The bandage was just comically big. He went from looking like an invincible giant to an old man who (laughs) fell asleep on a post-it note. (laughs) It's just too silly. I mean, if it wasn't absolutely terrifying, it would be funny. Uh, Alan says, it's not just Southern Europe. Central, too, with huge temperatures. My boyfriend is baking in Slovakia. Oh, really? What's he making? Can he whip me up a croissant? And Will says, I'm wearing a fleece in Paisley. Just the other day, I took off my um, th- my winter thermals for the first time this year. It's practically the end of July. Not that I'm complaining or anything. Whinging and whining and moaning. Good grief. 
I can't take another call because it's too uh, back up right up to the news. So I have to wait till after it. I'll, I'll do some of these texts and emails. Uh, Gareth says, heat in Canada. Every year we are breaking heat records in the summer and cold records in the winter. Maybe looking at hitting 40 degrees next week in Saskatoon. <laughs> There's no such place. <laughs> isn't, isn't that where uh, people used to spit in bars? <laughs> A Saskatoon. Yeah, pretty much sure it is, yeah. Chris says, so many places refuse to accept cash, my, like my local council leisure centres. So when card payment doesn't work, they close as they will not accept cash. I always use cash as using cards are very tricky for me. Businesses could still take cash even when card payment systems fail. Relying on cards is not foolproof. Yeah, this is the thing. It'll take about uh, uh, about 10 seconds for complete anarchy to break out if you can't use your credit card anymore and the cash machine don't spit, spit out money like it used to. How are you going to pay for stuff? I mean, particularly in those businesses that, like that uh, chap said, don't accept cash anymore. And you, you queue up in your local bank on Monday, as I'm sure many, many people will, somewhat spooked by the uh, events of today. I mean, it being utterly evident that uh, the cashless society will, is not something that we can rely on. And so they'll queue in their bank to take out some of their own money in cash and the person behind the counter will ask you what you're going to do with it. Believe me, anything more than about 50 quid and they will start asking questions about what you're going to do with your own money. If you haven't tried that and you don't believe me, give it a go on Monday. Queue at your local bank, try to take out, say... You know, a small four-figure sum, like a thousand pounds, something like that. And see if you can get in and out without being asked a lot of questions. <laughs> it's amazing. They just automatically assume that you're going to do something nefarious with it. I was queuing in my bank the other day, and there was a bloke in front of me who wanted just that. He wanted a couple of thousand pounds in cash. And the person behind the counter wouldn't give it to him without going through a whole host of questions, like it was any of their business. And the bloke kicked off. He went berserk. <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking, oh, really? Because the queue was, uh, you know, it, it was building up behind me and there was about four people in front of me before I got to the counter. And there was, of course, there was two counters available, but there was only one person manning them. Personing them, <coughs> sexist. And the woman behind the counter was not going to give him his money until he answered uh, a lot of impertinent questions about what he was going to do with it. And he went mad. And he st st started shouting the place down. It's my money, I'll do what I blow my light with it. Which is quite right. Not giving you your own money until you answer a lot of questions about what you're going to do with it. And eventually he yelled, I'm going to buy drugs with it. And somewhat cowed, the uh, nice lady behind the counter gave him his cash and he stomped off. <laughs> Probably to drive, buy drugs with it. <laughs> Want to score some pot? <laughs> I have no idea. Doesn't really matter, does it? 0345 I mean, I, I never leave uh, the house with any money on me, but I'm going to now. You betcha. Oh, look, just past to 10.30 on LBC, the news headlines... With Tim Daly. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. What we got here is a failure to communicate. Yeah, there was a failure to communicate. Several French TV channels reported to be experiencing technical problems. Uh, UK, uh, Sky News, off the air. CBBC was uh, also temporarily off the air. <laughs> Why was that? The children's TV channel. <laughs> The kids were distraught. Uh, in uh, the US, Delta, United and uh, American Airlines were grounded. In the UK, Gatwick and Luton airports were among the uh, airline check-in systems which were hit. The uh, biggest commuter rail network, GTR, said its Thameslink and Southern trains were disrupted due to uh, communication systems failing. Your train will be arriving late. You won't notice the difference. 
Uh, West Midlands trains of anti-West Coast Great Western Railway, Trans Pennine Express, also affected. Patients had important hospital appointments cancelled at the last minute. You also won't notice the difference. This was not just here, but it was in Germany and uh, Israel and uh, here, there and everywhere, baby. Doctor surgeries in the UK were unable to access patient records. Um, 999 services were uh, unaffected by the outage. Can you believe that? No. Hospitals in Germany and the Netherlands cancelled operations. Uh, hospitals in the US were having problems. Systems, failures, uh, threatened to leave people without their weekly wages. What? Yeah. Uh, Metro Bank reported problems as its phone lines in the UK and uh, went uh, all kaput. Santander said car payments may be affected. JP Morgan Bank, its staff were unable to log into their systems. And hedge funds were unable to do what evil things they do. <laughs> Payment systems appeared to have been hit by systems failures in uh, retail outlets and in France, where the Olympic Games are due to start next week. <gasps> next week! Oh. The greatest show on earth. How exciting. Um, they had problems there, for reports of uh, issues at the Olympic Games. Some football clubs were uh, uh, had problems with their ticketing systems. And... Um, uh, <laughs> just <to c> <laughs> And this is just a small one. This is just a tiny one. I mean, people have been talking about, uh, you know, sunspots and uh, great gobbets of hot magma being uh, squirted off the sun and uh, our way. Can you imagine if the internet went down? Or just pause and let that sink in. The internet. Imagine if that stopped. Because it's only just, uh, I mean, what is the internet? What, what actually is it? It's giant buildings the size of football fields which are located in uh, areas where they need uh, pretty much their own nuclear power station to provide the electricity to keep them cool. And they're all thrumming away with those, you know, the lights uh, dancing uh, hither, thither and yon. And, um, I mean, they got backups all right. But what if all of them went at the same time? I mean, it's not completely out of, uh, uh, beyond the realms of possibility, is it? What if the internet stopped? Not just a couple of um, couple. Many, many uh, hundreds of thousands of computers fell on their face because of, uh, you know, some um, uh, fat-thumbed computer code entry. If the internet went down, I mean, we've become so completely reliant on it in such a quick period of time. Still better not think about it, eh? Fingers crossed. Ilford, hello, Jeevan. Good evening, uh, it, uh, Dick. Yes. So, <laughs> no, it's just the, the first thing I heard in the morning when this had happened. My daughter happens to be with her family in Spain at the moment. The first thing I told her was, for God's sake, go to the cash machine yeah. and withdraw some cash because right now. Work. That's right. And not only that, I also told my son, who is about to go to Spain and uh, over here. I said, make sure you've got some cash in your pocket because you don't know what's going to happen. The cards are going to work or not. Yeah, that's right. Correct Mundo. Like Reckless Eric sang, take the K-A-S-H. Indeed. And as I've learned uh, from my wife, who happens to be an electronics engineer, that if it's man-made, they're guaranteed that it's going to break down at some stage. Well, that's sexist. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening at the moment. <laughs> Cards are not working. Card withdraw cash. Next, you can't get your weekly shopping. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because and, and if the, et cetera, the phone lines were down, uh, Morrison, the phone lines were down. Uh huh. And how are they going to order their food? Yeah, you won't be able to pay for your food, and you won't be able to because the because order, because the lines, the phone lines are down. Basically, you can't order, and therefore, the result is. If you go hungry. There'll be anarchy in the streets in about 10 seconds. If the internet goes down, if uh, you are unable to go to the supermarket because their lights are out, because the local electricity company can't provide the electricity in a safe way because their internet's down as well, and you can't yeah. pay for your food even if you took your own torch to the supermarket, so they're closed, and you can't go to the cash machine to go to the local store because the cash machine don't work, and... Um, uh, and their credit card system doesn't work either. What are they going to do? Just give you the food for free? No, they're going to pull the shutters down. Well, that's exactly what's happening in many places. Well, in some cases, as I said, you can't pay with your credit card. You can't effectively get any food. Yeah. 
go hungry. And then uh, the gas won't work because um, that's all, uh, uh, you know, the, the, sy that, that's the systems that run the gas companies there and the electricity, that won't work either. Mm. And, um, and the water won't come out your tap. Oh, my God, we're going to be like living in caves in about 10 seconds. We'll be... Well, uh, cash, that's what cashless society means, basically. Yeah, we'll, no be, cash. we'll, be, we'll be strangling chickens <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> oh, whatever, you can get all of <laughs> Yeah, but it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> as you said, on Monday or over the weekend, yeah. people are going to run to the cash machines and they can't withdraw cash. Yeah, that's right. So, and then everything will be on fire and flipped upside down. Yeah, it'll be a nightmare outside. I, I recommend you don't... Uh, I, I, store canned goods. You know, a little while ago, do you remember when the uh, the, the government of uh, the day... This government... That government, they released uh, some information saying that you... You should have your own emergency um, a backup kit. You should have food in cans and beef jerky yep. and uh, yep. a torch and some batteries and a gun. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really in a scenario which nobody wants, but if it's going to happen, yeah. be, beware. Exactly. Be alert. Be alert. All right. Good work. Thanks a lot, Jeevan. Yeah, I have um, detailed files about that because it seemed a bit weird to me. I, mean, I know I'm off, off mic at the moment. Maybe I'll look through this uh, in a while. I have de uh, all of this information. I have detailed files. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? I mean, I'm not. I'm not hallucinating about this, am I? The government told us to stock up in case of an emergency. Well, it seems like it just happened. Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Cullen, Derek. Hi, Nick. It sounds like you're stockpiling paper there. Yeah, I've got loads of it. <laughs> hey, I just want to say thank you and uh, apologise to your glamorous assistant because I think I confused her. Mm. But I want to thank you for your recommendation because this week I watched Guy and uh, Gatsby. Ah. Uh... <laughs> yes. Wow. Isn't it? <laughs> that is remarkable. But what what the analogy to, to like here and now is we are pretty much like computer chips. We are just computer data. Mm -hmm. And if that goes, then what have we got? Yeah. We're just back to rocks and <laughs> rivers. Uh huh. All of this uh, modern life that we've built around ourselves is just teetering on the end of a, um, uh, the, the head of a pin. It's, yeah. uh, it, it, it's so. Uh, fragile. Mm -hmm. we, we think that it's set in concrete and nothing could possibly go wrong and take this uh, lifestyle away from us. But it absolutely can. It can do it in the blink of an eye, in, in one second. Like I said, yeah. if the internet stopped working, uh -huh. everything we know will also stop working. It's, it's as if um, it's Francis Ford Coppola film, isn't it? No, it's a Godfrey Reggio film, but I think Francis Ford oh. Coppola was uh, one of the producers. Because the, the, they would have been made before internet types. Um, I think it, I'm going to say 1982. I, yeah. I bet that's about right. Because it's like it's like a portend into the future. Like, like this is what we are right now, and if we're not careful <laughs> with what we do, yeah, we're responsible. Yeah, you know, like it with what we're doing, then. Where do we go next? I should give people an idea of what it is that we're talking about. It's a film. It's my yeah. favourite film. I've, it's the film that I've seen more than any other by a considerable margin, and it's called Koyan Iskatsi. And it's uh, it's a, a wordless film. There are there's no dialogue in it. It's just a series of extremely beautiful images set <coughs> set to the mu <coughs> set. To, <coughs> oh my gosh! Do you want me to take over? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Can you sing something? <laughs> it's a series of... Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. It's a series of extremely beautiful images to the music of Philip Glass. And if you if you want to look it up, it's called Koyan Iskazi, which is spelt, and I don't need to look this up, K-O-Y-A-A-N-I-S-Q-A-T-S-I. -I. Better got that right. And I also recommend <laughs> you watch Home, if you haven't already seen it. What's that? A documentary from 2009. It's a similar kind of vein. Oh, yeah. I recommend watching that. But what struck me as a lasting kind of um, 
scene from Poyana Scotti is near the start. I'm assuming it was filmed in the Grand Canyon with the Colorado River. Yeah. And you could see the layers of sedimentary mm-hmm. rock. Yeah, yeah. And that gives a, a brilliant perspective of where we are right now. Now, if we take something that everybody knows, like the years 2024. Mm. So if you go back 2024 years and you put that against the layers of sedimentary rock, you're speaking maybe the, you know, the top 1-2% of mm-hmm. that rocks and what's underneath it is our past and yeah. the fact that you can actually see our past, you can look into the past, that is extraordinary. Um, I want to see it again right now. Uh, there's, yeah. There is no amount of times that you can see it and it becomes uh, boring. It's just a stunning uh, piece of work. And definitely. and there are a lot of shots in it that you will recognise um, because they've been repeated endlessly by adverts and uh, mm-hmm. they'll be inserted as, um, you know, transition pieces from one scene to another and, uh, and so on. Uh, but it was revolutionary at the time. Nobody had ever seen anything quite like it except for a, about the turn of um, the 20th century, 19-something or other, there's a Russian film called Man with a Movie Camera, mm-hmm. which I'm sure the makers of Koyanis Gatsi had seen because there is, it, it, there's something quite similar about it. That It's yeah. images of, <coughs> of a Russian town sort of waking up with this music that sounded a bit like Philip Glass in the background. There was um, recommendations to that um, on a, a shopping site that I went on to. Oh, yeah. Because I like to, after I read a book or watch a movie, I like to look at reviews, especially the one-star reviews, just to see <laughs> <laughs> how yeah. confused people are. Like, yeah, what? Well, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's no plot. But people were saying, McCoy and Scott say, get the biggest TV and the best sound system you can mm-hmm. get. Yeah. Close the curtains uh-huh. and just... And, and sit back and, and enjoy. Cancel all of your appointments. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, something else. Something else. Um, I don't know if uh, I listened to Carol and yourself on the What's Your Problem podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know um, if I've missed it. I don't think I'm up to speed. But she said she was going to buy Team America World Police. Oh, mm-hmm. Tell her to buy the uncut version. There's a cut version? Well, the, 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 the one that she was, was on Channel 4, I doubt if that oh, was the uncut version. right, yeah. But, yeah, she can thank me later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure she will. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Derek. 0345 6060 uh, I know this is a lot of information all at the same time, but me and Carol McGiffin do a podcast. Yeah. Now, it come, the one came out today. One will also come out on Monday. It comes out twice a week. Uh, the idea is it's a problem-solving podcast. It's also very funny. Uh, it's the time in the week when I laugh the most and uh, we just set each other off. It's, uh, I think it's 251, 252 episodes up there at the moment. What's your problem with Nick and Carol is what it's called. And if you want us to have a bash at your problem, send it to the following address. Nick and Carol at global.com. That's N I C K A N D C A R O L at global.com and prepare for total satisfaction. This is LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Everything is going extremely well. <laughs> yeah. Could have driven a bus through that gap. Let's have South Shields, Joanne. Oh, hello, Nick. Good evening. John. Um, what I wanted to talk about, and if I bore you, just stop me, because um, mm-hmm. I do this to people. Um, well, that's a terrible way to start. Well, it's a science thing. What it's about is, um, in America, there's a group of science bots, and they decided to rob a bank using electromagnetic pulses. That's like, you know, solar flares, when the sun ejects all these things, which is what people are frightened of, that will bring the internet down eventually. It could be a big solar flare. Do you mean, the, uh, do you mean as, a, uh, as a way to test the bank's security, or they were actually trying to rob a bank? No, they robbed a bank. Right. They succeeded. And what it is, they parked their car 
on a, there was a motorway near a bank. So they sat in the car. They had their machinery, the science pods. Mm. They phoned the bank and they threatened them. And they said, we'll wipe all your information, all the details of the clients if you don't give us, transfer us the money. And we're using an electromagnetic pulse, which does work. That's how people wipe credit cards and that. Mm. So they did it, got away with it. And now in America, no bank is built near a motorway. I just thought it was interesting but given what other today. roads <laughs> other roads are available you mean they parked on a motorway because that was an easy way to get away yeah and right. it was near the distance of their machine was near the um, the bank of course they oh. didn't have to be in the car with the electric pulse machine oh no they could have just it parked just outside a bank yeah yeah that's true so they could drive off quickly but I just thought it's interesting because it, that's one of the things they think can be used as a weapon that will make things like happen today. Yeah, same thing yeah, with the yeah. sun. Sun, like uh, sun. Uh, I don't really know uh, what I'm talking about on this or any any other subject, but sunspots. You do because you mentioned sunspots. Yeah, they uh, <laughs> ex they um, they pop out great hot gobbets of magma. And if um, some of it comes out, enough of it comes our way, then it will start wiping systems and taking satellites out of the sky and uh, etc. and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my son lives in China, and I warn him of this all the time. Mm. And I tell him how afraid I am of cashless society. Yeah. And he doesn't accept it. That's, the thing, like, about, oh, that's cool. the thing about money is um, you can't wipe money. I mean, you could steal it, you could lose it, you could burn it, um, but uh, you can't wipe it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, that's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good work. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Joanne. Sure. Cheers, my dear. Oh, three, four, five. 6060973. Mark says, nobody told me about the cashless society. We've had it around our way for years. It's called poverty. <laughs> yep. Uh, Heston, Isaac. Hello, Nick. How Hi. are you? Good, thanks. Right, yeah. Um, I'd like to talk about something which is uh, getting more attention, I'm pleased to say. Mm. Um, it's called, cool, and you are, are, are aware of it as well. It's called Project 2025. Yeah. Okay? And, uh, you know, there's uh, there's lots of videos on uh, YouTube about it and on the internet, and I'm pleased it's getting traction. Um, uh, in summary, okay, if if Donald Trump wins, uh, wins the election in November, mm -hmm. from January 2025, he will... Uh, he will uh, tear up the uh, Constitution, which has been around since, what, 1776? Okay. Have a totally braggy Constitution, install himself as, um, as lifetime president, and, um, and uh, basically turn the whole Constitution upside down. Now, this Project 2025, right, um, apparently uh, it's a 900-page document. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and uh, there's four pillars, right? Now, I've got the four pillars here, under, but they're a bit vague, so mm -hmm. it, it won't take long to, um, to uh, do a deep dive in, into it over the coming weeks. But the four pillars are a mandate for leadership. What does that mean? A per a, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, well, that's why I've got to uh, do a deep dive. A, per a personnel database. Yeah. Training and development. A transition plan. Okay, those are the four pillars. Right. Okay, so um, so I'm a little bit confused myself, but a couple of things <laughs> well, have come out already. I certainly, I'm glad that you called to explain this to us. Yeah, <laughs> because um, I mean, for example, one a, a couple of things that uh, that I know is one. I think there's going to be a removal of birthright. Now, I'm not sure what that means. I think that means if you were born in the USA, you know, you can still be removed or deported. I'm thinking, really? Okay. Um, another one is the attack on woke culture. You know, everywhere in, in the document is woke, 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 woke. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there'll, be, uh, th there'll, there'll be no critical race theory taught in schools. Um, and all sorts of things. I mean, I've only just, no, yesterday started to get into it. So hopefully by next week, I'll uh, I'll uh, know know a lot more. But what I'd like to say is this: um, we've had our own um, 
project uh, 2025 over here in the UK. It, it, and it was called the last 40 years of a Conservative <laughs> government. This government. Right? Yeah. Okay. And um, what the British people have done, they voted them out big time. They gave them an electoral spanking. And I feel uh, the American public should wake up to Project 2025, look to what we did here, over here in the UK, across the Great Pond, and and do the same. Yeah, it's, um, uh, you're, everything you're saying is falling on deaf ears because the people who are uh, determined to vote for Donald Trump just love the idea of him being a yeah. dictator. They it it makes them um, so excited they can barely sleep with uh, the giddy thrill of it. Uh, uh, they, they they actually do. I mean. Somebody went round and, uh, and uh, did a poll. What, what, would you like mm. Donald Trump to be a dictator? And his fans, pretty much uh, to a person, said yes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, this is it. Well, I mean, we can um, sort of... I mean, it's safe to say, you know, it looks like as of January 2025, mm. uh, the USA, you know, is... Um, may well be a dictatorship. You yeah. know what I mean? So, so uh, it'll, it'll be uh, Donny and um, his best buddy in the whole wide world, Vladimir Putin, who'll be uh, buddying up together, and uh, China will be uh, on the outside of that looking in, but it will probably become the world's major power, and uh, India and Brazil are charging ahead, and the European Union will be the only other major world power to uh, stand up to them, and then there'll be little old us, Johnny No Mates, a tiny insignificant island off the coast of Europe. And then the magnitude of our decision to leave the European Union will uh, come into sharp focus. Other than that, <laughs> there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, people are freaking out about Project 2025, which uh, Donald Trump says has nothing to do with him and he never heard of it and... Um, it's, uh, and, and if he says one thing, believe the other. I mean, I have I have a certain amount of files, but uh, it's probably best if you go and uh, look it up yourself. It is somewhat alarming. All of the things that he failed to do last time, he won't fail to do again uh, if he gets in uh, the uh, in uh, the forthcoming election in November. On your radio, on Global Player, and. Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Are you trying to be funny? Because I'm all out of head. Hello, boys. 0345 6060 973. Uh, let's see now. A lot of people asking me if I've seen the uh, the dinglings wearing bad, uh, bandages on their ears. Well, yes, I have. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't really miss it, could you? Hang on. One moment. Oh, here we go. I have detailed files. Former peach powder puff president and full-time whining baby, Agolf Twitler, staged another dramatic entrance to day three of his Make America White Again rally this time waddling into a packed hall of numbskulls and dingalings to the strain of James Brown's It's a Man's World. Because <laughs> 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 if there's one thing that is Looney Tunes, camo-clad, gun-toting, Bible-bashing cultists in Merca can agree on, it's that real men put lifts in their shoes and makeup on their faces and waft around in a cloud of hairspray. And I can't be sure, but uh, I bet every penny that I've got on me that James Brown would not appreciate his music being used by Mr. Good People on Both Sides. And Trump raised his fist as he entered, once again wearing a bandage on his ear. And the sight of his crowd punching the air with their fists while they shout, fight, 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 is uh, a little bit, you know, it's a little bit History Channel. I'd go ahead and freak out now if I were you. <laughs> so Trump came in and he raised his fist as he entered once again wearing a bandage on his ear, as did the most particularly slack-jawed members of his willingly gullible audience. They sat there as though in rapture, with huge plasters on their ears, like 
people wear crosses round their necks. Like the idiot crowds in Life of Brian, who took their shoe off because Brian lost his while trying to get away from them. We are actually living through what used to be two comedy films at the same time, Life of Brian and Idiocracy. But there used to be comedy films about how easily led and stupid people are. Now they're both documentaries. And Hulk Hogan, the actor from the pretend wrestling show. He ripped his shirt off on stage at the Trump rally in a sort of religious fervor to reveal a Trump T-shirt beneath. And the crowd went berserk. They had a patriot gasm you could hear from space. And it looked like it was a scene lifted directly from Idiocracy, a film about the lowering of intelligence over time and how America became not a democracy, but an idiocracy. Well, welcome to the future. Half of America is here already. And the... Well, I was going to say hero-worshipping of the peach powder puff ex-president, but it's not hero-worship, it's adoration. It's deification. They venerate him as though he is sent from heaven. You actually had the mayoress of Crazy Town, Marjorie Taylor Greene, an elected official representing the state of Georgia, who said that God personally saved Donald Trump because she saw the flag f behind him flutter into the shape of an angel before that kid tried to shoot him. So, presumably, God did not intervene to save the retired fireman behind him, just as he didn't step in to save any of those children in the hospital in Ukraine, bombed by Donny's best friend, Vladimir Putin, and he didn't raise a finger to save any of those who died and are still dying in Gaza, and God sat out the Holocaust and let five million people die, but God leapt in to steer the bullet from hitting the screaming Mimi. Yeah, that makes sense. But if God did that, couldn't God just have prevented Donny from getting hit at all? I mean, you know, while God was at it? If God was really with him, why couldn't God have just steered the bullet away? I mean, either these people are insane or I am. And why are people writing this fact that he got hit by a bullet? Just after it happened, I was speaking to a Washington reporter on that night, on Sunday, on this station. And the immediate word from the inside, from his source in the Secret Service was that it wasn't a bullet, it was a piece of glass from the teleprompter that uh, flew off and nicked Trump's ear. But that doesn't sound as heroic, does it? I mean, I'm no expert, but wouldn't a bullet from a military assault rifle have made more of a wound than that? And how did a kid who was thrown out of his high school shooting club for being a terrible shot become such a perfect shot while under pressure on a roof, a hundred metres away from a moving target. He didn't. He missed. He hit the lectern, a piece of glass shattered off, gave Donny a tiny cut on the ear, and him and his cult worshippers have been milking it ever since. Either that, or God saved Donald Trump. Oh. You decide. Nice use of the ex-fireman who actually did get shot behind him, though. I mean, his widow said that Biden tried to call her to extend his sympathies, Joe Biden. But she wouldn't take the call. <laughs> because cause she votes Republican and knew that her husband would. They were Trump fans, so she didn't take the call from the actual president, Joe Biden. And then she was asked, did Donald Trump call? No, he didn't. Donald Trump went golfing, just as you would imagine. But he did kiss the fireman's helmet, which was set up for him, along with the man's uniform, on stage. So weird. He walks over and does that grabby thing he does with the flag, and women. And he kisses the man's helmet to whoops and cheers. Uses a dead man's uniform as a prop, on a stage, at a rally, to worship himself. All perfectly normal, nothing to be alarmed about. 0345 6060 973. Uh, 
Hampshire, Laurie, L- <laughs> Lauren. It's the Lauren. Lauren. Sorry, I've got to feel the giggles because you. I've delayed the the radio's just come back on in my ear, oh, and yeah. the first thing you said was Trump was kissing a helmet. <laughs> he was. No, I actually rang to tell you about these people with the cheese hat. Did you see those? Oh, yeah. What is that about? What's that all about? <laughs> That's exactly what I, I don't, I'm to see whether I don't you know, because I have no idea. I mean... I no idea. They call them, um... Do they not call them orange cheese? <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen them. I mean, it did look like clown show crazy time. Yeah. Didn't it? Well, the whole thing's cra- All clown of show crazy time. <laughs> Why but, were yeah, they wearing... Why? Big Why can we can we make that a that a, slices uh, of cheese on their head? A, yeah. a challenge to have someone to ring in and tell us what that's all about. Somebody will know. Maybe someone from the states will know. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, all they'll right. have a better phone line than me as well. No, this you are coming in clear as a bell. What? Yeah, amazing. Oh. All right, thanks yeah. a lot, Lauren. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. I have no idea what the cheese thing was about, but you know, it fit, fitted right in. <laughs> John says, did you see the dinglings have been wearing bandages over their ears in solidarity with Trump? They're, I know, I've read that one already. He says, their levels of commitment strike me as a bit superficial because they didn't go as far as to adopt tangerine facial makeup and tumbleweed hairdos. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this week, I, I, I don't know, I mean, normally, the first time around when... Uh, Donald Trump was the president of the United States of America. A president! Can you believe it? I was kind of appalled, uh, but mostly amused. Because there's just something annoyingly funny about him. Particularly when he's not trying to be funny. I mean, gen- generally doesn't do jokes. He's just funny despite himself. But this time around... I'm I'm more alarmed. I think funny has left the building. I'm more alarmed now. Let's have uh, Harrow. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Hello, Jonathan. Yeah, good evening. Jonathan. Can you hear me? Your, your receptionist, the triage my call. I called at 10 from the train. Yes. And she said, uh, you're sh- you know, I was shouting, and she said, call back. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, listen, I, I, I've been served Section 21. I'm in temporary accommodation in the, I, I don't want to say the exact city, in Southampton. In Southampton, yeah. I'm in a penthouse, actually. I'm paying out of my own pocket, and it's got, uh, I don't know if I can call them sandaliers. It's four, six, eight a week. Four, six, eight a week. I'm struggling financially. Yeah. and But you're in a penthouse with chandeliers. No, it's on the 12th floor. They call it officially penthouse because I have obsession about people jumping above my head. <laughs> it sounds as though that you don't have any furniture in that penthouse. It's very, very echoey in there. Well, this is the thing, yeah. I just, I just come back. It is completely empty. There's lovely lighting, but mm-hmm. they, they gave 6 and, 6 and 21 in the last place because I was nuisance, apparently, allegedly. Yeah, well, I would think so, yeah. And I'm literally walking around barefoot. Is it very echoey? Um, it sounds like you're calling me from a cave. No, because all the fu- there's no furniture. I can't afford nothing. But no, I, I have been on train most of today. Yeah. And the one thing I did not want to lose was the, um, well, some property documents for properties in India, but also my sipper. Your what? My, my pair of sippers. Oh, slippers. Right. Yes, slippers. Yes. And so I, I'm barefoot now. I genuinely, um, I, don't, I don't know what the situation is. Um, and I made my Bangladeshi taxi driver stop at three positions. He said... You are my, my most difficult customer of the summer. <laughs> why? Why did he stop? At, why did you have him stop at three positions? Am I going to regret asking that? No, because a a fat man and a very fat man will come tomorrow to give me some cobbles, but they said they only do cash in hand. Right. So I needed a cash point. Yes. And then on the train, there were lots of young people talking about all sorts of like um, disgusting things. And then two of the young uh, chaps, like uni lad, they uh, went into toilet together. But that's not what I call about. Okay. You know, I know I haven't been able to listen to much of LBC, mainly because, you know, I'm without house and home. Mm-hmm. But I know you don't like Trump, but I believe you had to break into your serious tour last week because of the incident. Yes. And I will tell you one thing genuinely, Nick, I'm barefoot. This is pathetic. Um, 
I will tell you one thing. I don't want to name your specific colleague by name. Pause. But now that Zen O'Brien has done that inspirational pro Trump viral video, have you seen it? Uh, he's done a what now? He's done an inspirational pro Donald Trump video. James O'Brien has done an inspirational pro Donald Trump video. You think I'm joking you? He put me in idiot corner because I said that uh, no fault <laughs> divorce has led to plummeting uh, birth rate. And he said, Jonathan, one day you might have a girlfriend, but maybe one day you might not. Yeah. Um, but he even, because it was, Nick, it was so inspirational. I hate him. I mean, Trump, by the way. <laughs> I, now, listen, I, I hate him. He is, he is crude. He is nasty. He does mm. not pay his bills. Yeah. He has assaulted women, not allegedly. Um, however, that, I, I agree with James O'Brien. Because the problem, I'm going to open a window, sorry, I know I don't have long. But the problem is, uh, I don't want to start problem in the new flat as well. Uh, the alarm. But the problem is that uh, Donald Trump wasn't that, I've been watching that video so many times this week. Mm -hmm. You know, when he's pumping his fist, did you not see James O'Brien's take on it? James O'Brien did a promotional video for Donald Trump. No, I did not see it that. He said the defiance and all of James's walkie cookie let's see at uh, YouTube obsessive. They all, all went, oh my God, James, you've gone to the other side. <laughs> but he has a point. <laughs> no, listen, um, he has a point. But what's it the point? An, it is an iconic image. Donald Trump with fist in the air. And it yeah. is that 50 cent song. Many men with death upon me. I've been watching that and I've been listening to 50 cent. And I have been watching his Republican convention. Um, speeches where the progeny of that hellish family will never end. Even his grandchildren <laughs> are now adults and they give speeches. Yeah, I know. It's, I know. It's, but can, can I just conclude by say, saying, I'm, uh, look, if they kick me out, I'll just shout out the window at this new place. Mm -hmm. Can I conclude? But I'll do it. I've got no shoes. Um, I'll just conclude by saying that um, Donald Trump has won. You know, he's won the president, doesn't he? I mean, I, it is a movie we are living in. I, I have no furniture, and I don't know what I'll do. I will probably next time just do a toilet on the train. And he has won the... He, he's won it, hasn't he? Uh, well, we'll find out in November, won't we? Yes. Uh, it's, I it's, think it's, I think people are so, uh, people have got to stop um, uh, just fatalistically expecting that uh, that's it, the game's over. There's many months and turns to go. It is, it is, it is history. I, I, I'm so inspired by him. Many men with death upon Trump. Yeah. He's not gay. But <laughs> no problem with anyone is. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've run out of time on that call. Thanks, Jonathan, for uh, whatever that was. James O'Brien has done a promotional video for Donald Trump. I'm saying that as a question while looking through the screen at my glamorous assistant for some sort of confirmation. I've been very, very ill uh, this week. It's, um, I'm not entirely uh, recovered. Voice not entirely recovered yet. Um, so I've been uh, tuning out for much of the time, trying to get some sleep in. But I seriously doubt that that is the case. Uh, Dan says, I work in IT and resilience. It's IT security and resilience. Wow, sounds a bit serious. The EU released a piece of law a couple of years ago to force particular firms to adhere to strict resilience standards called the Digital Operation Resilience Act. It's coming into force in 2025. Oh, too blooming late. <laughs> it says the EU, though, is very much ahead of the curve here. The UK released a white paper previously intimating that they would do the same thing. But lo and behold... When it was expected to come through Parliament last year, nothing materialised. Really? Through... This government... Nothing happened. I am stunned. I do wake up every day thinking, oh, oh. I, and, and remember, oh, yeah. They're out. It does feel like we've turned a corner, doesn't it? I mean, nothing has actually changed yet, apart from we're not constantly assailed by nodding robots who just spout a lot of noise and numbers signifying nothing. And every now and again, a, a, a random Tory will appear on the screen and they will do their old routine. Chris Philp, I'm thinking of you. He was on the uh, telly just the other day and he, he just he couldn't wait to get into his old routine. Oh, under the uh, previous uh, government, we were 86% uh, uh, better than the 43% that we uh, gave the 8 billion. And, and it just, 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 
just a, a load of nonsense just pours out of him. And you can't stop him. He's like a numbers generating machine. And that used to not just be him, that used to be all of them. Every time somebody put a microphone in front of them, they would come out with all that stuff. And it didn't seem like they were governing at all. They were just manufacturing sound bites. And then we had the uh, King's Speech, and, uh, you know, it does go on a bit. Love the hat, though. <laughs> Where'd you get it? <laughs> but it did feel like, oh, wow, the government. Yeah, I remember what that was like. Grown-ups. What a concept. Must never be allowed near power again. Not now, not ever, never. They had their chance, and they blew it. Again and again and again and again and again. Anyway, I'm only halfway through this text. Do you want to hear the rest of it? No. <laughs> it's uh, essentially saying the EU has um, got a Digital Operation Resilience Act coming into force to protect us from the thing that happened today. Uh, the UK, on the other hand, because we are enjoying our freedom. Oh. We don't want uh, any of that uh, pesky red tape, so we'll just bob about uh, on our own with the, uh, the lights flickering. Nothing materialised under the previous administration. Can you believe that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. He says, we can expect more of this in the UK to come because the government has been asleep at the wheel for 14 blooming years. Yeah. Too busy uh, coming up with uh, lies and misinformation to try to bamboozle the general public into voting for him again. Somewhat forgetting about running uh, the country, you know, which was the actual blooming job. Now, have I done the break? <laughs> screwing her face up and looking at the air <laughs> looking at the ceiling as though the answer is there somehow um it's difficult to tell isn't it from this system I don't know have I huh you can tell I you can't can tell. how can I, I tell I don't think you have though wait a minute okay so there's one at th uh, 11 there's not a, there's not an ad break at 11 wait or it's uh, 20, 20. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just guess no. <laughs> Cross my fingers and hope for the best. This is LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Oh, hello. 0345 6060 973. There was a, uh, an internet outage that was much, much more serious, uh, particularly in America, particularly in a, uh, in a uh, specific area of America that almost nobody has been talking about. And it didn't have anything to do with planes or getting your cash out of a, the a hole in the wall or any of that stuff. Paying for food at the supermarket, none of that. Very, very serious IT outage in America, in a certain area of America. A certain area of uh, America where uh, Trumple Thinskin was uh, holding forth. Don't be rude. I'll come to that in a minute. 0345 York. Jan. Hello, Nick. Jan. How are you? I'm great, mate. Good. Um, talking about the internet going down, mm. I've still got my landline. Oh, um, smart. Yeah, I like it. It's, uh, you know, I'm not getting rid of it. But by January 27, mm. all landlines are going to be connected through the internet, aren't they? Does that sound like a good idea? No. No. Very bad idea. Very bad idea. Yeah. So, we're going to be stuck, aren't we? Yes. Stuck is a good... W uh, uh, you've restrained yourself well there, Jan. Stuck. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, we're going to be stuck. I've just written down what they say on the... Um, I think it was... Uh, BT, what said it? Hmm. it? It'll mean embracing a more flexible and scalable modern digital solution. What does that compared, mean? I haven't finished yet. Hang oh. on. Compared to traditional older phone lines. Yeah. Now, yeah, until the internet goes down, and yes. then what? Exactly. It's, it's like those adverts that uh, persuade you to buy a, a light bulb for £50 because you can mm. turn it on and off with your phone as opposed to mm. a switch on the wall. Yes, that's right. 
And when your uh, Wi-Fi goes off, you won't be able to turn your lights on. You won't be able to do anything, really, will you? No. If the internet does go down, and it, you know, it's made by uh, man and women, but man, yeah. but man, capital M, mm. it will, it, it will fail eventually. It must do. It has to. And uh, they can boast about as many backups as they like. It will eventually happen, if not necessarily worldwide, then, uh, you know, countrywide or even area-wide. And uh, at that point, we will realise that we've, ma we've mm. uh, made a big mistake by completely trusting something that we don't actually understand. I mean, mm. where is the internet? Does anybody actually know? It's, it's, no. It's, no. it's nowhere and everywhere. Nobody knows, do they? Get um, Sergey Brin on the phone. I'm sure he has uh, something to say about this. Who? <laughs> <laughs> one, one of those uh, moon-faced creeps that run Google. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm. No, I mean, when I read about that, I thought, God, dear, that's a bad idea. Because I like my landline, you know, as a backup. And yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get rid of it. Apparently, I've got one. Apparently, I have a landline in my home, and I've been paying for it for years. I had absolutely no idea that it even existed. Really? Yeah. So I better start using it before it gets taken away from me. Yeah, you had. But yeah, absolutely um, everything that we rely on, all, all of modern life is dependent on the internet. And mm. you don't have to think back very far when we didn't actually have one. I mean, it's in the 1980s, people were carrying around this uh, extraordinary new invention. Well, not people, but a couple of people had a thing the size of a house brick. Yeah. A mobile phone. And you thought they were real posers, didn't you? Completely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. Every, everybody's got uh, enough computing power to uh, send um, a, a rocket to the moon and back mm. in their pocket. And uh, we've become so reliant on it that um, uh, half of us wouldn't know how to get back to our homes from where we happen to be during the day without staring at our phones and seeing oh, no. when, the, dreadful, when the bus is coming and what train we've got to get and uh, right, yeah. turn, turn left at the lights and all of the rest of it. And, and apparently you can even get a um, thing now to uh, switch the kettle on before you get home. <laughs> 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 so you can make a drink as soon as you get in. Isn't that insane? It is. That is completely mad. But that is true, yeah. Internet um, enabled. Wi-Fi enabled kettles. That's true. When the, inter when the internet goes down, you won't even be able to have a drink, will you? No, not a cup of tea, nor nothing. No. Yeah. I don't have know. Have you got your emergency rations, Jan? No, I haven't. Do you remember the government sent out that message saying uh, you must uh, stock up with the following items? Vaguely. Yeah, vaguely. I've been uh, going through my files here. I've got about 100 pages of uh, different uh, information and stuff the, from uh, the last couple of months. And I can't find it. My in I, I can't find my emergency information. Oh, no. So um, yeah. I, I am, in your own words, uh, Jan, screwed. Exactly. I didn't yeah. say that, did I? What did you yeah, say? I think I said stuck. Stuck, yes. <laughs> I don't think, don't think I said screwed. <laughs> no. no I that might was, have thought it. But yeah, you thought it, but you didn't say it. Yeah, and then mm. I just blurted it out. That's right, yeah. Shocking. But I am very, very ill. I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm taking a lot of drugs at the moment. Oh, dear. I shouldn't actually be operating heavy machinery. I did miss you last week. Thought you were going to run every night, and yeah, I know. You disappointed us. Yeah, well, I can I can see where I'm going to be ill in the future now. Whenever I have another week's fill-in work, because that's <laughs> twice in a row that happened within that's about right. a month of each other. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll start thinking it's a bit fishy, won't they? Uh, yeah, a little bit suspicious. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And then I'll be screwed. I mean, you will. <laughs> <laughs> you will be screwed. Yeah. Oh, Jan, the mouth on you. I know. You should be Scrapple, ashamed. Yeah. All right. Cheers, my dear. Got to go. Right. Thanks for that. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Text eight four eight five zero. Email Nick A at LBC dot co dot UK. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at ten. Nick Abbott, LBC. It's uh, eleven thirty. And the news headlines with Tim Daly. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC.
Is he crazy or is that just the way he acks? 0345 6060 973. Tony says IT systems have a process called disaster recovery, whereby it should switch over to the second system in the event of serious outage. I have no idea why... why oh, hang on a minute. Sneezing. Sneeze coming. Sneezing coming. Oh. False alarm. Damn it. I hate that. I have no idea why CrowdStrike didn't have this, says Tony. Well, I'm... Oh, hang on a minute. <coughs> <coughs> oh. oh. <laughs> I need to lie down in a cigarette. How about you? Leeds, Alex. Good evening, Nick. How are you? Um, OK. OK, I'm, I'm sure you enjoyed that sneeze. Um, I'm here to pay homage to uh, James O'Brien's Mystery Hour. Yes. So I'm here to answer a question uh, posed by one of your previous callers. <laughs> why... Oh, oh Gesundheit. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'll start again. Yeah, I'm here to answer... Hello? What? Sorry? Oh, there seems to be a delay on the line. Sorry, I'm here to answer one of the previous um, callers who was asking why at the Republican National Convention uh, in Milwaukee people are walking around with, like, foam, cheese, yes. hats on their head? Yes. So, I'm just going to preempt the answer by saying I might get called boring because it includes a reference to American football. Oh, no. <laughs> American <laughs> football? Oh, well, I'll, I'll preempt the, those people calling you boring. Boring! Go ahead. And also, um, you might say, this show is educational, isn't it? So, anyway, I'll move on. So, um, Milwaukee, uh, obviously, uh, in the state of Wisconsin in America, mm -hmm. and it is known as the dairy capital of the USA. Is it? Yes, it is. So they produce a lot of uh, a lot of cheese, that kind of American horrible crap uh, stuff, yeah. artificial stuff, yeah, that yellow, orangey, whatever it is. Cheese. So, um, so that's the reason why cheese. So people are known as cheese heads in the state of Wisconsin. Are they? So they are. So the American football reference is uh, there's a team called the Green Bay Packers which is uh, also in Wisconsin. And their football team, the fans are known as Cheeseheads. And if you ever watch um, the crowd at their stadium, they're wearing those cheese foam hats as that's, well. That's that's so. never going to happen. What's never going to happen? Me watching the crowd no, 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 at an no, American you, football game. Not you personally, you generally. Right. okay. The, uh, so, yeah, so that's where it comes from. So that's why they're... Obviously, the convention's taking place in Milwaukee, in yes. Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Hence the... Uh, the, the delegates wearing the uh, the cheese hat things. Wow. This is an educational show, no? <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> Good work, Alex. Thanks no. a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. James says, I'm sick of, sick of Keir Starmer as Prime Minister now. It's not even been a month and already he's broken the internet. Bring back Boris, he says. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... <laughs> All those um, Brits going over there to... <coughs> to um, kneel before uh, the uh, screaming Mimi. How sad and pathetic is that? You know, the Clacton gas bag, he was going on about, oh, I had to come over to uh, see my friend Donald Trump in his hour of need. <laughs> his hour of need. He had a little nick on his ear. I've uh, had uh, worse accidents than that shaving. His hour of need. And he was asked by um, Emily, our own Emily Maitlis, uh, have you seen him? He said, uh, no. <laughs> Did he personally ask you to come? He said, uh, his, uh, his people um, said it might be, a, it, it would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, right, sure they did. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Mr. Blobby is uh, out there as well, trying to ingratiate himself with the, uh, with the tangerine scream. And he, he gave a, a speech to a, an audience of, I think it was zero, there or thereabouts. It was zero adjacent. There was images of the, of the audience that uh, he was uh, giving a speech to. This room was completely empty apart from him. <laughs> it looked like somebody had piled some hay on a distant stage in front of a, a room full of empty seats. 
and <laughs> and then most comical of all was uh, was Liz Truss. Absolutely. She does look as though as she, she looks as though somebody has installed a shop window mannequin on a robot vacuum cleaner. She moves around as though she has had a large part of her brain taken out with an ice cream scoop. No offence. How was that woman allowed to become the Prime Minister of this country? And she's over there as well. Why? I'm genuinely unclear. Yeah, I believe you. What is she doing there? Nobody's ever heard of her in America. I mean, they've barely heard of this country. Other journalists were going around um, asking uh, <coughs> Americans at that... <coughs> at that clown show... Um, whether they'd heard of Liz Truss, and not a single solitary one had. It's like, who's that? Liz Truss? No, I don't know. <laughs> the blink and you'll miss her, catastrophic prime minister of this country. All over there trying to um, ingratiate themselves uh, with uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and you have to ask yourself, why? And I'll give it to you in a sound effect. Yeah. Betcha, betcha, betcha. That's the reason why. They all hightailed it over there. How's the um, how's your new MP working out for you? By the way, you good people at Clacton, is it every is he everything that you hoped he would be? I heard that you knew what you were voting for, so you must be thrilled. <laughs> Luton, hello, John. Yeah, I talk about Milwaukee. Um, did you see the size of the bandage on his ear? Uh, of um, Trump's ear. Yes, it's enough to, enough to, enough to put around your whole arm. It's uh, <laughs> it was as big as a, it was bigger than his actual ear. It's as large as a plane it's, car. It's, no, it's, it's four it's four ears worth. <laughs> it's just, just to make sure everyone knows. You know, I'm, I'm a bit worried about this guy J D Vance. Do you know this geezer who's coming? <laughs> yeah, he's um, he's convinced. I mean, anyone who comes over and announces that Keir Starmer. He's going to be presiding over Islamic an Islamic takeover, uh, which will take over nuclear weapons in the UK. I mean, the guy's insane. <laughs> They're all insane. It, it looked like the insane clown posse was having a convention. I've never yeah. seen anything like it in my life. I mean, it was it wasn't a, a political event. It was it was a cult event. I was cult. Yes, it is. It is, it is just what's that? Kim, um, Kim Jong Un. He would have done a good job. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's you could have put, principle. exactly right, you could have put Kim Jong-un on that stage and nobody would have noticed the difference. <laughs> totally. And well, the funniest thing I thought, when, when Vance was speaking, they, it was like they had to work out what is the chant we're supposed to do. And they said, like, four more years, or, you know, duh, 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 lock yeah. him up. Fight, fight, lock fight. Her up. And then, and then they, but they stopped, because actually, because Vance said, oh, well, yeah, they, they read, you know, Biden's wrecked the economy and da da da. And yeah. suddenly they look at each other, they didn't know what to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so they started singing. They started singing. Lock him up. No, don't sing. It's up four more years because that's Biden. We don't want four more years. Oh, not that one. It's like they get the wrong charm. It's just, um, but it's scary. It's, yes, it, it is like, scary. Yes, I mean, the, it, idiotic and scary in equal measure, which is not yeah, a, not a good combination. How how, how is Keir Starmer going to cope? When he 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 will know. When he goes over, it's inevitably. Well, I, I I personally don't think. Actually, I'm one of the few people who think that Trump is not, is surprisingly not going to win. Uh, because it's a long time to November. I think you'll find Biden is, will step down and somebody more suitable will come in. I yeah. think uh, things will change. Um, Most Americans don't want either of them. They don't want Donald Trump and they don't want Joe Biden. But what we get in this country is a, a lot of publicity and a lot of uh, propaganda, essentially, from uh, America that Donald Trump is hugely popular. He just isn't. Most of the country does not like him. He's never gone above 50% in the entire no. time that he's been uh, pretending to be in politics. And, mm. uh, and, and neither will he. I mean, uh, but, but the, the sort of Looney Tunes policies that they're, <coughs> that they're proposing... <coughs> oh, dear. <coughs> oh. Sorry, <laughs> it's. Uh, I'm going to go to for a break. <coughs> I'm going to go for a break. Okay. All right. Th thanks a lot. This is LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Well. 
Let's get back to it. Um, EA's actually still on the line. John. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, are you there? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I, thought you, I thought you'd been shot by one of Trump's bullets. Um, <laughs> he'd gone right round the globe and hit you. Um, yeah, yeah, and you know, I just... Uh, it, it's just... I, I mean, the other thing Van said mm. was... Um, he just went on about the Chinese have deliberately attacked us with fentanyl and have actually poisoned the whole of California and it's, and, and my state of Ohio. And they so then they started singing, O-H-I-O, O-H-I-O. <laughs> and he's saying, no, 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 that's the wrong gun. <laughs> so it's like, it's like how, can you, how can you believe the Chinese have launched chemical uh, addictive properties into California? I was just... Bizarre. Well, we're talking about a man who is um, a Trump now, who yeah. thought that drinking bleach and, <coughs> and, entering, yeah. <coughs> and entering light into the body... <coughs> oh, God. Uh, <coughs> Hang on. <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> Where's this come from? He thought that <coughs> maybe I should try drinking bleach myself. He thought that um, <coughs> entering light into the body would cure you of COVID. <coughs> oh, dear. <coughs> I noticed my glamorous assistant next door is... <coughs> not, not even... Would you like a glass of water? Good grief. Just sitting there watching me die. <coughs> <sighs> okay, calm. James says... Oh, no, I read that one. Uh, I'm sick of... Ki Thanks a lot, John. Gotta go. In case you catch it. Yeah, this is what J.D. Vance said about Donald Trump. Eight years ago, <coughs> in the lead-up to the 2016 presidential election, J.D. Vance was a critic of Donald Trump. Publicly... He called the Republican presidential <coughs> candidate... <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> Publicly, he called the uh, Republican presidential candidate an idiot, said he was reprehensible. Privately, he compared him to Adolf Hitler. This is J.D. Vance, the guy that Donald Trump has picked as his running mate. <laughs> but by the time the, uh, the former... By the time the former president tra tapped Vance to be his running mate, he's now one of his uh, Trump's uh, most ardent defenders. Oh, God. <laughs> this is not very good, is it? Uh, <clears throat> he was harshly critical of Trump, both publicly and privately, in 2016, says Reuters, of J.D. Vance. Um, <clears throat> he said, I go back and forth between thinking Trump is a cynical a-hole... Very bad word, beginning with A. Thank you. And um, a cynical a-hole like Nixon, who... Oh, <coughs> wait a minute. <coughs> oh. <coughs> I go back and forth... I'm going to get through this. I go back and forth between thinking Trump is a cynical a-hole like Nixon who wouldn't be that bad and might even prove useful, or, or that he's America's Hitler, <laughs> wrote J.D. Vance, Donald Trump's new running mate. And, uh, and now, of course, uh, he's um, saying, please disregard everything I've ever said about Donald Trump because he offered me a job. It's absolutely incredible what's going on. And then, uh, oh, gee... Boris Johnson's column in the mail is beyond belief. I, I recommend you don't you don't read I recommend you don't read it. It's behind a paywall. <laughs> uh He's basically saying that Donald Trump is the uh, saviour of the free world and will stop the, uh, the war in Ukraine. Boris Johnson says that. Yeah, he'll stop the war in Ukraine 
by <laughs> siding with Vladimir Putin. I mean, he's, he said that over and over again, Donald Trump. And I do recall that Boris Johnson used to think a different things about Donald Trump. I think he's betraying a quite stupefying ignorance. Yeah, said Donald Trump, said uh, Boris Johnson of Donald Trump. He said... I think Donald Trump is clearly out of his mind. Yeah, and now, now he loves him uh, more than life itself. And why have all these people <coughs> changed their minds? I'll sum it up for you. Yeah, America's where the money is. It's all about the money, honey. Oh, right, let somebody else uh, do some talking. Ascot, Adam. Hello, oh, no, you're right, Nick. No. I can tell. <laughs> um, I disagree with quite a bit of what's been said about Trump over the past uh, few minutes on various uh, guests and et cetera. I think, I think we're picking a bit here, um, particularly with the things such as, you know, his bandage on his ear, Yes, it's big, and yes, people are going maybe a little bit too far, and his supporters, you know, wearing the same thing. I think that's a little bit odd. But at the same time, a bullet has just gone through his ear. You know, you spoke a little bit earlier about how potentially it hit the stand and a bit of glass has gone through. Regardless, I think it's besides the point. This man's life was almost taken from him. I think on live TV, his head would have been open. I think it's a little bit disrespectful to sort of... Oh, please, bash. Adam. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait till you start... Um uh, talking about the people who actually did lose their lives, then what about the man who had his, the tip of his ear nicked? Well, absolutely, and it's not about Trump, and I think that he has paid his respects. He's done a lot for these people already. He's raised $6 million. No, I know that's not no, anything No, he, to... didn't. he didn't do anything of the sort. He went golfing. What are you talking about? $6 million was raised for these families. He's been speaking to them for the past number of days. And these Adam, families can how much money that. did Donald Trump give? Nothing at all. He allowed his name to be put on a, a GoFundMe site and gave nothing himself. He went golfing. Look, I don't think it's without question that he would have paid respect to these people. You really think a man is just going to... He didn't. A patriotic man at best. See, these are his respects. He didn't. Him. We heard it from the fireman's wife that she had not heard from Donald Trump. I don't believe she, that. You don't believe his wife? I think that's most likely taken out of context. I don't believe it, that he... Oh, has oh, oh, please, Adam, do me a favour. People like you, you just don't believe anything at all that does not coincide... <coughs> <coughs> coincide with your uh, uh, previously held beliefs. His wife said that Joe Biden had called her multiple times. She didn't want to speak to him because her dead husband was a Republican. They were at the Trump rally, so she didn't want to speak to Joe Biden. When asked, has Donald Trump been in contact, she said no. Well... Besides the point, I think either way, right? It's, it's little, not beside the point, Adam. It is your point. No, look, it's I 100% believe that Donald Trump would have made contact. I don't know where. Why? This what, what, what makes you What makes you believe that? Because put it this way, this man is very patriotic. These people Who are patriotic. Is? Donald Trump. To, Donald Trump. Yeah. In what way he has been, In what way has he shown patriotism? I think it's been evident for the past number of years how patriotic this man is. He could in, have gone in, what, in what way? In, in the way that he could have very easily gone off into the sunset with his millions of dollars. Instead, he's still fighting for this position as president. Are you kidding me? What's you, wrong? You think he's fighting for the presidency because he's patriotic? I do believe so, yeah. As opposed to the, the money and the keeping himself out of jail part? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Why, why do you believe that? Other than that I mean, you've joined a cult. <laughs> Come on, Nick. No cult. Listen, this man is without a doubt patriotic. I you think keep you saying think... that without giving any evidence. Tell me one thing. He's been in your life for uh, at least uh, six years now. <coughs> Name one thing he's ever done. Listen to any of his speeches. Okay. I have. They're insane it. ramblings about uh, would you prefer to get uh, electrocuted or eaten by a shark? And uh, what about the late, great Hannibal Lecter? Compare this speech to any other president, particularly Joe Biden. When has Joe Biden ever 
possessed any form of patriotism to be towards the United States people. Adam, you, uh, it's absolutely pointless talking to people like you. You've uh, you've joined a cult. Reality is not uh, impinging on your brain. <coughs> it's not a part of your life. Pointless talking to you. I might as well try and uh, convince a Christian that God doesn't exist. No amount of evidence is going to make the slightest bit of difference. And I do believe I've, I've had your infuriating call before. Same thing. Donald Trump is uh, the, the Messiah. Yeah, okay, I get it. Painful. Kevin says, uh, everyone should carry cash and have spare cash for backup. You are an idiot if you think the answer to everything is your mobile phone. Some people lose their phone, and it's worse than losing a parent to them. Adrian texts, airports in chaos, NHS can't book appointments. This is what happens when a Labour, <laughs> Labour government gets in power. It would never have happened if the Tories had still been in power. Has anyone said this yet? I bet they will. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Ahmed says, did you get a chance to see the clip of Hulk Hogan praising Trump? Yeah, yeah, I did. Absolutely incredible. It's like I said before, there's a film called Idiocracy. It used to be a comedy about a dystopian future. Now, it's a, <coughs> it's a documentary about the present. I wonder if there's somebody in the building who can take over, because I'm not sure I can do another hour. Huh? Yeah, I'll try, I can try and sort All right. <clears throat> <sighs> Maybe if I just calm down a bit and stop trying to project. Uh, Mary says, uh, were the people who swam in the Seine insane? It does seem to be un inadvisable, but I think that there's a lot of people who are going to be... Uh, uh, in in and around that uh, body of water, pretty soon the the world's greatest athletes are going to be uh, are going to have that water all over them. So um, somebody should try it out. It was the mayor of uh, Paris, wasn't it? Something like that seems inadvisable to me. Uh, David says you should try closing a credit card account. It's impossible. They can't do it in a branch, making it as difficult as possible. You can get a credit card by tomorrow. I don't think I've ever tried to close a credit card account. And uh, Simon says, Biden can finally have a rest now that Hulk Hogan has told Marika who to... Oh, Murka, who to vote for. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. The actor from the pretend wrestling show. <laughs> it's just amazing. Leonardo says, all the local banks are closed. Where can one go and get cash out? Uh, that's a good point. If the, um, if the holes in the wall don't work, where can you get cash money? I mean, that's a bit of a bind, isn't it? People don't have any, uh, any like in small towns, all the branches of the banks have closed. There aren't any anymore. So, um, at the point at which the cash machines don't work, where can you go and get money out? 0345 6060 973. <coughs> Text 84. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at lbc. On your radio, on Global Player, and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at midnight, this is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Everything is going extremely well. I want to tell you.
tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio making a picture again. Yeah, it's a radio show, dear. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close mic myself so I don't have to um, speak very loudly. Fife, Andy. Yep, I feel for you, Nick, but particularly as you have to project your voice for people who clearly do not know what they're talking about. Um, that, that last caller. Um, I was going to talk about the technology back. You remember this, Nick. I mean, I can remember when you used to have to go to the phone box and, and go and make telephone calls mm -hmm. because because bills were so expensive. You couldn't make calls from the landline. It would cost you a fortune. You had all different types of tariffs, didn't you? Peak time, off-peak times. Yeah, don't, and don't even think about calling abroad. That's right. I know, exactly. It was, you know, you cost you a fortune to call abroad. That was like a real luxury, wasn't it? If you wanted to phone your relatives in Australia or something, and maybe do it maybe once, once a year or something at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, and it, it would take you about five minutes to dial the number because it had, you had a rotary phone. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, I can remember as well some of the, the radio stations uh, at, at the time. You couldn't you couldn't go out and phone into a, te a, a, radio, a local radio station because they wouldn't allow you to phone from a phone box. I wonder why that was. But oh, yeah? I don't know if you, yeah, they wouldn't. Uh, if you phoned up from the phone box, you know, you had the pips and everything. If you phoned up, they, you, they'd say to you, I'm sorry, we can't put you through. I think it's just in case you ran out of money or something. Right. Hmm. I don't know if you remember all that, but I remember having the queue for the telephone and all that, and we never had the internet, and I don't know, I don't know how many telephone boxes there is now, Nick. I mean, I've probably got credit card things in them, isn't there, and all that kind of things to pay. I think like, they're being you know, used as, well, as as they always were, as uh, public urinals. It's just that you you don't um, well, no. make a phone call while you're urinating now. Oh, that that's true. I mean, I just wonder uh, how many people still use them, because I did an internet search on the World Wide Way, and... Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how many people use phone boxes now. Well, I mean, maybe some they, Google places. Do any actually exist? Well, I, I've seen one uh, once, I think. <laughs> no, I, I, there, yeah, every now and again you see one on a high street, but um, I, I don't know that they're actually used as phones anymore. Are they? Are they? Yeah, it'd be interested. I wonder if anybody's listened to your show. I mean, I don't think anybody would. I mean. Mm. Everybody's got mobiles, but there's some people who don't have mobiles, and there's some areas where you can't, like I say, without the phone box. I think um, the the, you know, the BT are still committed to keep so many percent of phone boxes because it's obviously for emergencies. And like what happened today, I mean, a lot of people have internet to to, to phone out, yeah. and they don't have that. You know, what I mean, that's a good point to think about, Nick. Mm -hmm. We're all in big yeah. trouble, Andy. Yeah, well, you look after yourself, Nick. Right? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, me. All right. Hang on. Okay. <coughs> right. Um, next. East Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Hi, Nick. Um, let's hope Clive gets in early and you can get a bit of a break. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, I was thinking about these five and four year sentences that have been imposed on the... Um, <coughs> Absolutely ridiculous. That. I mean, when you look at the judge concern and you look at other cases that he's presided over where five years was available as a sentence mm. and, and he hasn't put people in jail. Just yeah, it's 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 like the memo didn't get through. The government's changed. We're not run by the Tories anymore. I mean, um, and just compare, and he wouldn't allow character reference or specialist um, experts to be heard in court. Well, look what happened in Bristol with the slaver statue that got thrown in the dock. Yeah, they were allowed to explain why they'd done what they did, and they were acquitted. Yeah. John, Mon John Monbio uh, out of The Guardian wrote a good uh, article about this and um, basically saying how unbelievable it is that they couldn't actually uh, defend themselves by explaining to the jury why it was that they took these actions, which was, th th which was the only reason they did take these actions. What they were uh, actually judged on was um, as though they'd just gone out to deliberately ruin people's day, as though they were just vandals, uh, w without the, without um, being able to discuss the purpose of what it was that they were doing. It, it's absolutely incredible. And um, I, I, at this point, I can't read you a <coughs> very much of what... No, no but it's authoritarian, Nick. This is, this is state. This is Stasi stuff coming down on, on 
people, which is quite alarming. I mean, this is like Pretty Patel and um, Cruella. Cruella Bradman, yeah. Benches, they've sort of got their victory from now they're on the back bench. Yeah. But this is what they're aiming for, that, you know, you, you can't protest noisily. Yes. If no more than one person can protest, otherwise it can be into, we can intervene. I mean, this is quite authoritarian <clears throat> stuff. Oh, it's terrible. Fergal Sharkey put it like that, you know, Fergal Sharkey out of the undertones yeah. and does a lot of good work uh, pointing out the disgusting state of our rivers and seas. He said... Five Just Stop Oil activists received record sentences for planning to block the M25. Five years for attending a meeting. Meanwhile, water companies have robbed us of £85 billion in dividends, loaded water companies with £64 billion in debt, dumped 4.6 million hours of sewage in 2023 alone, and what happened? Nothing. They collected their bonuses. Absolutely correct. And when you look at the... If they said half their sentences, which is what you would expect them to say, yeah. that's going to cost the public purse half a million pounds. And uh, even if they were going to give them a slap on the wrist, if they'd find them 10 grand between them, that would look at the, what it's going to cost the public to put these people in prisons that are overcrowded and they're having to let um, well, yeah. a, a much I mean, more serious offenders out mm -hmm. to let these people in. Yeah. The whole thing is insane. This is average prison sentences in years, according to the Ministry of Justice. For a sexual offence, it's 5.5 years. For the Just to Stop Oil activists, 4.3 years. Robbery, 4. Drug crime, 3.3. Violence, 1.7. Violence, 1.7 years. Just Stop Oil activists for attending a meeting, 4.3. That's just... I mean, what, what, what has happened to this country? But I do feel as though we turned a corner. We, it does seem as though a great, a great. Oh. Yeah, we turned a corner in terms of the politicians actually in, in Parliament. But it's going to take some time to. It's, it's a bit like a wave. It's like a, a tanker. It's going to take some time to turn this round and and get us back, at least in criminal justice terms, um, back on an even keel. I think. Yeah. Maybe. It's not going. That isn't going to be an overnight thing like an election, but hopefully this lot will be some progress over the next, the next few years of actually bringing us back to a democracy and not an autocracy. Yes. Well, it's in his gift, surely. As Prime Minister, he can um, uh, correct this judge. I mean, it's not like he's a stranger to the law, Keir Starmer. No, let's hope not. I mean, we've not got in there now, wanting <laughs> to do the flogger and hang them. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Mike. All right, cheers, Nick. 0345 6060 973. Uh, let's see now. Oh, Ranjit, Oldbury. Hi, Nick. You're right. No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You know, um, I was just talking to your glamorous assistant, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I've got a friend of mine, you know, when he was going to, each time he wanted to go on holiday, a week before, he'd have a sore throat, mm. yeah, like what you had. Yeah. And it happened, you know, probably because he used to go away a couple of times a year. He had a shop a couple of doors away from me, and it used to happen to him all the time. And I noticed that the last time he was going to do like uh, six or seven shows in a row, mm. it happened to you. And then mm -hmm. last week you were saying you're going to do like five, six shows in a row. Yeah. And it's happened to you again. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not that I'm saying you're afraid to work or anything. I think there's some <laughs> underlying thing there that you should get checked out because maybe it's causing you some kind of stress. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, no, but you won't know because, because honestly, I, I could not believe. I used to say to him, I say, Vic, come on, mate, you got to sort of, why you, well, he says, he says, Ranji, he goes, he's Tom and go on holiday, it always happened. And I couldn't yeah. believe it because I, I tried to look for a medical excuse, yeah? And there wasn't one in the end and there was nothing wrong with him. He just used to flare up. I think, so maybe I, you should go I think, to the doctor. I, oh, I'm going to go, yeah. But I think mm. that happens to a lot of people that um, they hold illness in when they're working. Mm. <clears throat> and then as soon as they sort of let go and go on holiday, the illness overwhelms them. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what happens to me sometimes. If I'm feeling a bit tired or whatever, or run down, what I do is I'll have extra vitamin C tablets and I'll have some paracetamol that it gets me through the day. Mm. And then, like, if you do that a couple of times a week and then when Sunday comes and you've got the day off, yeah, I'm totally just shattered. You're, you're no good for nothing, to be mm. honest with you. Yeah. You know, you can't even go down to the pub. Um, which is bad. So maybe you should uh, try and have a look and see what it is that's doing it. But just what Mike was talking about, those heavy sentences, yeah? Okay? Yeah. And then everybody's been talking about, you know, um, you know, morale in the police force. Apparently, I was listening to, you know, LBC, some guy punched um, a police officer got a 26 pound fine and got a suspended sentence and he wouldn't even do community service because he was saying he can't speak English and he's going to pay, I think it's two pound a month or something like that. So what's going on in this country at the moment? It, it, it is really winding me up now. Those guys were thinking of protesting or whatever. Okay, they were inconveniencing us, right? But they've got a point to make when no one listens to you. Right, you know they've got, they've got to protest, and what Joella Braverman and Pretty Patel have done, right, is forming a Gestapo society, and I think this judge needs to be reprimanded. And you know, sometimes I think the Americans, like what Donald Trump is saying, I'm going to pardon all those people that were you know rioting, which is wrong. Yeah. The king, the king, the king should turn around and say, right, listen, that guy had a legitimate right to protest. Why are you sending him, right, to five years imprisonment? That that can't be right, I'm, I'm afraid. <clears throat> yeah, I seriously doubt the King is going to insert himself into the process like that, but Keir Starmer should definitely do that. I mean, uh, mm. he could just flick his fingers and those people would be back out in the street. The whole point, no, of, can't, can't. Whole, the whole point of protest is to inconvenience. If you do not inconvenience, not protest. No, and you know the kind of Lord Chancellor just say right, let him out on um, you know uh, bail and, and until he you know he has his appeal or whatever stuff like that. Because like like some of the crimes you hear, you know, I mean you know, and, and then just slightly changing the subject. Keir Starmer's only been twenty two days in in power. Right, 21 mm. days if you include taking it. People are saying what's happened in Leeds is due to <laughs> Keir Starmer. Oh, God. You know, I, 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 you know these di the, ding the dinglings, yeah, like you got in America, you know, the ones that were wearing the earmuffs or whatever he, he's, you know, <laughs> right? It, it's getting to here. The one of the things, right, I was watching it ages ago, you know, when you, you know, when you're going to have children, they, they, you see these videos. No. Well, it, no. Well, okay. I just say you have in America. What happened? You know, when a woman's in labour, mm. right? The man sits on. You have a double bunk bed, like a, a bunk bed, yeah, where the woman's on the bottom in labour, mm. and the man's on top, and he has a rope tied, right? to his private part. So when a woman oh. feels really under pain, she pulls it so he feels the pain. Oh, come and on. And that's what these, these, not serious, this is what these yanks, right, are doing. They're feeling Donald Trump's um, pain by, by, they, they look, they look like idiots, don't they? They're all of them? Yes, they, they all look like, um, it was just a big clown show. It was just an absolute preposterous. If it wasn't so serious and if they weren't so... Um, scary, then it would actually be mm. funny. But, um, you know, there's there's something that's not very funny about a cult. No, and, you know, I said, and you, you touched on it earlier, right? I said about 25 years ago, there was going to be three major powers in the world, the Far Eastern Power, the United States of Europe, and the United States of America. Right? Yeah. Now they've destroyed Europe by trying to break us up, Putin. Right? Mm -hmm. Putin has got his foot in both camps. He's got he's got his foot with the Chinese and the Indians, and now if Trump gets in there, yeah, he's got his foot in America. So there's only going to be the one power, isn't there? And and Europe are going to be totally wiped out. Because well, I don't know. I mean, Europe's pretty powerful. I mean, they are. Uh as uh, economically powerful as um, <laughs> as America, the the EU, and um, us. But the thing is, when China and I I India, Brazil, and all them lot, and America all club together, 
then America, uh, Europe isn't as powerful, I don't think. Uh, well, in that mm. in that circumstance, yes, and it mm. will the the stupidity of leaving the European Union will uh, be um, become very evident quite shortly. Mm. I mean, yeah. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, when Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage were really arguing with each other, it's your fault Brexit ain't working and your fault ain't mm. working. Uh, the media really never took it upon themselves to exploit it and say, look at these two mu- uh, Muppets, yeah? They're the ones that brought this country, right? And now they're blaming each other. And and then the people in Clacton, right, like what you said now, they should be saying, where's Nigel Farage? And yeah. you, you was correct, right? Within 20 uh, days, right. he's up there, right, in America looking to kiss his ring. As you said, it wasn't twenty yeah. days. It was like mostly within two days. He uh, he got elected, mm. and then uh, Scott put um, as as fast as he could. Yeah, he's. I mean, just the very idea that he's going to be taking uh, regular uh, meetings with the good people of uh, Clacton to fix their potholes and make sure that they can get an, uh, uh, an appointment with the GP and. Yeah try to reopen the local swimming pool or whatever it might be, that Nigel Farage is going to really immerse himself in the lives of the good people of Clacton. It's, well, if you believe that, then uh, I've got a bridge I'd like to sell you. Here, Ranjit, thanks for that. 0345 606 0973. LBC. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Right, let's have... Um, it, dip, sky blue, who's it, not you? Romford, Robert. Ah, yes, sir, Nick. Nice to uh, speak with you again. It's a very long time, uh, about 14 years or something like that. Wow. Um, well, actually, what I want to uh, bring across is that uh, too many people rely on digitised information like AI. And this morning, when the whole lot went down, as normally would do, like, you know, and it, it will not be the first time, this will happen f- many more times. Mm. When you look at people like Trump, people like Farage, etc., when you look at the 1930s, that maniac in Germany, he was using a new medium, it was called radio. Mm-hmm. When you look at 2024, you have another medium, it's been around for a while, but the problem is with AI is that people themselves, there is no conspiracy. The, the trouble is that people themselves sucker they get suckered into actually um, they believe in the search engines so they they put the information in the advertisers will go okay great stuff like you know you obviously like this so they then start feeding you more and more of this false information because you yourself picked it mm-hmm. as a person you you start looking for certain things yeah if you don't keep an eye on what you're searching for you'll get suckered into people like Microsoft who tell you you need to have a Microsoft account. Well, actually, you don't. You can actually get around that. I, uh, yeah, I, I think, forgive me, though, but I, I think you're mixing a few things up. I, what you're really talking about is social media, not searching the Internet for information. Social media it, But it's is, all connected because you've got uh, uh, social media and then you also got, uh, at the same time, because a, a very good friend of mine in Holland who's a very good programmer, <clears throat> He retired from programming four years ago. Do you know why? Because he bought Bitcoin in 2008 or something when he told me she'd buy something. I thought, oh, I don't believe in all that. Yeah. He done very well out of it. I didn't. I should have taken his advice. But he also said something very important. He said the problem with people is they will rely on this digital technology so much. And I'm, a di- I'm, I'm, I'm an electronics engineer. But they rely on it so much that they forget to see reality. And this morning, reality came knocking on people's doors. Mm. Yeah, uh, again, forgive me, but I think you're mixing a few things up. The, uh, the, the last part is right, yes, we shouldn't rely on uh, IT, but you mentioned uh, Hitler and radio, and the thing that Hitler did was he gave out radios that only got him. Absolutely, there was yeah, only, you're right. There was only one channel, the Hitler channel, and he gave radios out for free, which was yep. essentially um, uh, blanketing Germany with propaganda. Yeah, exactly. But the same thing is happening now, but it is that people are only getting one source of information, and that is being 
uh, sort of um, rehashed for them and reinforced by yeah. the, by their choice of uh, social media feed, or, or rather, social media feeds them the things that they already believe, and that's oh, one of the yeah. reasons why half of America thinks that uh, Joe Biden did not win the last election is because they can't believe it because they didn't get any information previous to the election that uh, gave them uh, an indication that anybody was going to vote for anybody but but uh, Donald Trump. That's, that's, that's one of the reasons that they can't actually quite bring themselves to believe it is because previous to Joe Biden winning, mm. th they couldn't conceive of... Uh, b because everybody they knew and talked to was going to vote for Donald Trump. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what they believe. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and, and that's the same problem with people like uh, Vance. I think uh, he, he, to me, he's, he's, he's not much. He's talking about Trump being Hitler rather than his bubbles in my in my book. But uh, mm. people like him are absolutely dangerous. People just do not understand how dangerous such people can be because, you know, you're only one step, in America. I think right now they're only one step away from a, a, a something very similar to. What, what, what Russia is, a dictatorship. Yeah. Well, that's why Donald Trump loves Vladimir Putin and Viktor Orban and um, the uh, Kim Jong-un and all of those people. He Because Donald Trump wants to be a person who is not questioned, who can rule um, without impediment. He wants to be a dictator. He said it himself. Donald uh, Trump being a president, having all this power over all this social media, yeah. over all this digital information, because it accelerates up. Moore's law says every two years you double the amount of uh, uh, capability. Right. Of Processing power, yeah. Yeah, which also means that people like Trump, and, th and th this is so dangerous for people do not see, is that someone like him, he'll have suddenly so much more access and, and he, he now learns lessons because although he says he's not a politician, he's very much become very quickly a politician, <laughs> you know? And, and well, for him... He, I think he, he's, he's, uh, he's surrounded himself with people who are politicians and he's surrounded himself with people who are even more dangerous than he is. All, all Donald Trump uh, is interested in is himself. But yeah. he's now surrounded by people who uh, see the bigger picture and it's um, essentially... T taking over America. That's what this Project 2025 is. Just read a little bit of that and uh, become alarmed. All news agencies, there was, in the, in the late 1970s, you probably remember this, there was an American film called The Wave. And that film showed a bunch of students in, in a college, and, and this teacher went like, you know, look, um, one student went like, how, how did Nazi Germany got so big? How did it got so powerful? Yeah. And instead of actually explaining it to him, he started to virtually doing a George Orwell type thing, you know, where he took over and, you know, he told people, yeah, they're bad, like, you know, you've got to be like me and blah, 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 basically all spiel. And that film, you barely ever see it. It's one of the most fantastic films ever. And What's it called again? America. What's it called? The Wave. R-A-V-E. The Wave. That's, uh, uh, oh, the Wave, W-A-V-E. Yeah, The Wave. Right, The Wave. Right. The wave, and you, you looked it up. It's in, I think 1979, 1980, and it was so good. I, I mean, I, I was about 14 years old, and the impact it had on me because you know, being Dutch, like my, my, my half my family went up in the, in the damn chimneys because you know, half Jewish, and uh, quite a few of uh, my uncles worked in the uh, Dutch underground. And, and yeah, to me, like people like Putin, and I just hate those people because I know what those people. I see what they do, like you know. Uh, being of Ukrainian ancestry like six generations ago. Yeah, my granddad used to play accordion and he used to play these Ukrainian songs as a four-year-old. I didn't have a clue what they were. I thought they were great, like they sounded good. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> he, just, well, he, he just expressed himself in bing builder's terms. But I get it, Robert. Thanks for that. Uh, 0345 6060 973. Uh, some uh, texts and emails. Marcus says If your cash is not flowing electronically, payments not going in automatically get fined. Payments not going in, oh, you automatically get fined. Try contacting anybody and reversing the fine. It's impossible. You can't talk to anybody. Yeah. 
Uh, David says, that's true, Nick. Anything over £2,000 and you're form-filling and quizzed under a bright lamp, as in trying to take uh, that amount of cash out. Your own money. Out of your own bank. And um, they won't let you have it until you tell them what you're going to do with it. Isn't that incredible? Talk about a brave new world. Uh, this says, um, I have a backup. I don't bank online. I have a stash of cash, and I still get paper bank statements, just waiting for a time when the system goes down and isn't recoverable. And Chris says, now the shouty Nigel Farage has been elected to the House of Commons, he will be able to really make himself heard above the other shouty loudmouths. He will feel so, spe so special that his voice will be heard. Uh, not, says Chris. Uh, right, not, not entirely sure what that means. Uh, but uh, it uh, fits right in on this show. Now, is, uh, is Clive going to... OK. Well, I'm sorry about this, but um, I'm going to bow out a half an hour early, and Clive Ball has uh, been uh, good enough to say that he will uh, step in at a moment's notice. So um, I might be back tomorrow. We'll see when we get there. 12.30 on LBC, the news headlines with Tim Daly. Lines 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 with Tim Daly.